free shuttle bus service to reduce the number of cars traveling to Riyadh, and working hard to eliminate the use of any single-use plastics from the showgrounds. To landfill procedure and uh, contract, endeavoring to reduce our total waste, and also whilst actively working and engaging with our... So privileged to bring it to you are Billy Ben Donnell and joining me the Air Commodore, Mark Manwaring. Manners, good morning. Good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. A very warm welcome from me to the Royal International Air Tattoo 2024. And what a day we have lined up. is for the wind uh, southerly at eight knots, uh, which is good for display crews, but uh, not so good if you happen to lose control of an umbrella or a gazebo. So please. Help us to uh, keep on on the airfield by keeping control of all the water deadlines. Absolutely. And uh, I think the, uh, the question that's on uh, everybody's lips at the moment is what is the weather going to do and how is that going to impact? Uh, well, actually, fear not. Uh, the latest forecast is for the wind uh, suddenly at 8 knots, uh, which is good for display crews, but uh, not so good if you have to lose control of an umbrella or a gazebo. So please help us to uh, keep fond of the airfield by keeping control of all your possessions.
three air-to-air -air kills were claimed by Eagles. To date, fighter versions of the F-15 have claimed 104 aerial victories for no losses, and the advanced Eagle variants such as this will take this on long into the future. So touching down after a somewhat abbreviated but still very impressive demonstration of its qualities. The Boeing F-15 QA Ababil, flown by Jason Dotter and Kevin Tinsley. Well, now moving on to the runway down at the right-hand end is an aircraft, and we'll be talking more about that as we go on through the display with our NATO 75th anniversary commemorations this year. C. Griffin, flown by Captain Andre Schmanko. In fact, at one stage, uh demonstrated an extremely precise routine there by Hauptmann Alexander Stegmaier of Tachischen Luftwaffe in Geschwader 74, the German Air Force, with the EF-2000. We've not been much luck with the specially painted uh, display jets so far this week, aren't we? The Danish F-16 went on service at all the... backtracks the runway if you were intending to meet the Finnish Air Force F-18 Hornet. 60 years of excellence, 60 years of the Red Arrow.
but now we're going to be seeing vertical flight demonstrated in a rather different fashion. And it's to the... You can see the ship approaching from crowd right, carrying a Batfield gun on one of its three unslung load hooks. Flying the aircraft today is Flight Lieutenant Ian Cooper, known to us as Coops. Is more than 1,000 flight hours on the Chinook, which has clocked up on numerous operational deployments, including on the Shader and on the new Kamin Bali. Joining Coops in the cockpit today is Flight Lieutenant James Patrick. These craft, in order to attach the gun to the Land Rover, provide mutual support ahead of the gun moving to its onward battlefield location. So as you can see, the team are now positioning to drop the unslung load in front of you. Dropping off an unslung load requires robust and effective communication between all members of the crew. The pilots are unable to see what's going on under the aircraft. So this is achieved by the crewmen in the rear of the cabin, painting a mental picture of the pilots over the intercom, using voice marshalling to direct the aircraft to a precise drop. Concord. 
the rest of formation. Watch for the colour change as Red One brings the team down the line.
Pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Eric Mickelson. Eric, a very warm welcome to you and your colleagues to Fairford. Great to see you here. What is visibility against black? Unbelievable. Yeah. We are uh, some of us would like to see the aircraft being blue and yellow because that was the original uh, painting and the color scheme for the uh, Norwegian Fly School during World War II. Oh, oh, oh yes, yeah, it's the uh, triangle or death deformation. And the uh, team is going to the next class started just after Christmas in early January. Here we can see them on the uh, front left coming in on a chevron formation. Flying us number two, there is uh, Captain Tinta. He is uh, one of the first female pilots in the Norwegian Air Force and actually one of the most experienced pilots in the whole Norwegian Air Force with about 9,000 flight hours. With background from P3 and putting a lot of uh, restrictions on the. Uh, so I think we can say it's a two seat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they come in from the right in the trial formation. You mentioned uh, Bardifoss, we are from Bardifoss and uh, the uh, Royal Navy Command of Helicopter Force and then further on the Joint Helicopter Command, they had a base uh, inside the perimeter of Bardifoss for about 50 years since the, the late 60s, so they've been there with uh, the Essex and the Sea King yeah. uh, for the last 20, 20 years. Double tray, 3 plus 3, then we'll reformate on an echelon formation before the split up. <laughs> Uh, rocket launches and also if you're interested in speed uh, well Royal Air Force in England's work is uh, Royal Rory Underwood uh, will be there along with F-16 test pilot Chris Sasquatch now back to the final
Kowalski, the BAE Hall, Mark 66. generation multi-role fighter jet with stealth capabilities. American built, it is operated by or has orders placed by 11 NATO nations so far.
to master it, and the floor is to the knowledgeable voice of Ben Dana. Mike, thank you so much, and thank you very much also for mentioning the Mild Master once again, which we all love hearing about. Great, great pleasure. <laughs> Stay with us, because weather permitting, we hope that you've got two more displays to talk about from your flight test centre. But now we look back 50 years. Formation being led by Red, Red One from the Red Arrows, squadron leader John Bond. Bank turn, I think it was Bond who was going to bring it into a slight right hand turn for a top side pass. Air Force F-16AM Fighting Falcon, not the specially painted jet, but the spare aircraft that was flown in from Denmark earlier, and then the Swiss Air Force aerobatic team, the Patrice Suisse, taking us through until half past five. Uh, so, Ben, going back to uh, what we were saying earlier about the early 70s and it being uh, a real innovative period uh, in aviation history, um, let's just go back through the list of aircraft that were first flown in 1974. Um, 1974 saw the first flight of F-16 Fighting Falcon that we were going to see slightly later on today. The Panavia Tornado in August of 1974, the Hawk, as we've said earlier, the Big One Lancer, as we've said earlier, and if we go back two years before that, in 1972, the then Fairchild A-10, the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, in July of that year. Here at Rear also, um, many aircraft that are actually significantly older than that. The Lockheed U-2 that we've seen fly over the first day of this show, uh, first flew in 1955. The McDonnell Douglas F-4, uh, but that predates, because that was orig originally the Boeing 367-80, which flew in 1954. And the Boeing E3 Century first flew in 1972, but at the moment. Let's put it into perspective as to uh, what else was going on when the F-16 first flew. Uh, believe it or not, the Ford Mark III Cortina was still in production, as was the Morris Marina. And it was, it was at that time, and that's why it's lasted half a century. So uh, this year, thinking of Lockheed Martin products, which the F-16 is rightly saying.